Legions Imperialis is here and I am incredibly excited. I've been looking forward to this since the game was announced. I never got to play the original Epic. I've been playing 40k since 4th edition, so I'm a diehard fan, and I'm just super excited to get my hands stuck into this new aspect of the hobby. With it, there has been a lot of content coming out, some battle reports, a lot of painting materials, box reviews, but I haven't seen a lot of things like theory crafting on the lists, which is the thing I kind of love doing the most. So I thought I would go ahead and celebrate the release by kind of trying to start up a little bit of a series and doing it by releasing two videos. This one making an Alpha Legions list and another one making a Emperor's Children's list. I play Loyalists in 40k and while my doubt in the Emperor may be small, it is still there. So it's the perfect size for epic scale. As we talk about this first list with the Alpha Legion, there is something I want to talk about first. I think it's fair to assume that most of us that are getting into the game or are waiting our components got the starter kit. And I think it's also fair to assume that a lot of people that are waiting to hear about it are eyeing the starter kit as it is kind of marketed as a good entry point. There's been a lot of talk about this starter kit, mainly in the fact that you can't really build a legal force without using the starter kit specific non-match play rules they released for it and how that's a bit problematic. That's not really what I'm aiming to talk about here. What I'm aiming to talk about is the design of the components of the starter box and kind of how it all fits together because it's a little odd to me and heavily influenced the way I made this list and I suspect others will make their lists. If you play 40K or are really just familiar with any of GW's properties, you know, Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, even some of their Lord of the Rings products, you've seen quite a few of their starter kits that usually release when there's a new edition of the rules coming out for that game system. These will often have two factions that are very distinct that you can split but with a buddy and go halvesies on the box with. That is with the exception of 30k because it's all marines also and you could realistically keep everything in the 30k box and have a decent force. But for 40k it was always very easy to split. I remember having Battle from the Crag and splitting the Tyranids with my brother. I remember buying Black Reach and splitting it with my neighbor so I had even more marines and they had orcs. I even moved to a new city around the start of 10th edition and was very easily able to find someone to split Leviathan with because Again, that's kind of how these boxes are made and visualized by the community. You only really ever want half of it unless you're a collector. With Imperialis, if you split it, you have very little to actually work with, and it's not very cohesive as a force, and you have a long way to go before you're to a standard game, even a halfway game. So you're not really intended to split it, but you're not really intended to keep it all, it seems, because when you look at it, you have a long way to go with your primary faction to get to a legal force especially at higher point values because worth noting that regardless of whether or not you're just intending for the titans and the secondary faction you keep all that as your allies you actually can't use all of those points legally as allies at 3000 points because you're only allowed to use 30 percent which is a little bit less than a thousand and both of those warhounds already are 660 and whatever your secondary faction is, you have 500 points worth of them. So you can't even use all of it for allies at the standard point game. Very strange. So what is the intent then? It seems to me that the intent of this box is for you and your friend to both buy one and swap the components that you don't want, the faction you don't want. So one of you gets two sets of Solar Auxilla and the other one gets two sets of Marines. The reason I think this is when you do that, things are strangely way more cohesive and way more flexible in terms of player expression. I'm gonna be talking about this from the Marine perspective as a, this is an Alpha Legion video, but again, most of this is still true for the Solar Auxilia. They have a little bit more of an easy time because they have a little bit more baked in flexibility, but it's still true for them. And I'm gonna start by talking about the Sicarian and Predator tanks that come in the box. See, you get three Predators and two Sicarians as part of this box, which are two separate battle tank companies. Odd in its own right, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. The reason these individual sets are odd is, at this size, they're kind of just small little skirmish tank units, kind of easy to pick off and lose their effectiveness. 
in addition to that, we know that both of these sets are only half of how the Predators and Sicarians will be released, and they haven't released them with the release of Epic at this moment. How do we know then that we're only getting half? Well, in the instructions manual for the starter kit, everything with the exception of the Titans is lifted from their in-box separate sort of instruction manual. And for Predators, it asks you to build six, and Sicarians, it asks you to build four. So in this starter box, we're getting half of what these units will be released as, which is very frustrating for me, and if you're like me, incredibly annoying for anyone who wants complete units in their collection. However, what's odder is they seem to have baked this into the actual design of the detachment itself, because you can run Predators in squads of nine and Sicarians in squads of six, meaning that once you do go out and buy those kits with the intention of completing or rounding out your tank squadrons, you can mesh them together, which has some pros, but is still very frustrating from a collection perspective. But when you swap, you suddenly don't have those worries. You have six tanks, you don't need to worry about buying more. At least for Predators and Sicarians, you have four. And at those sizes, they're actually quite cohesive as a unit and quite effective as a unit. There's still an oddity about using them in list design, but we'll talk about that when we get to the actual list. Moving on to the infantry. This isn't so much a problem of the starter box, so much as it might be of the infantry's design, but it could be resolved if they just included two boxes of infantry. With a standard infantry box, you get two Command Legionnaires, eight Tactical Legionnaires, two Plasma Legionnaires, two Missile Launcher Legionnaires, two Terminator bases, and two Assault Marine bases. In addition, you get four Contemptor Dreadnoughts, and the idea here is that one box is enough to make a Legion Demi Company, which is kind of the standard Marine formation. The intent here is you divide the Marines into two separate core units to fill out the mandatory detachments of the formation. Ideally, what you would do is you would take the missile launchers and plasma gunners and put them with one squad of tactical marines and the terminators and assault marines with another squad of tactical marines. All of these specialist bases can be tacked on as upgrades to a standard tactical legionnaire detachment, the starting size of which is four bases. Every time you take an upgrade, of which you may take four and you may duplicate, you include two extra bases. So this addition would be two additional upgrades to both of these standard legionnaires which you cut down the middle and split into two cores because you have to in order to legally make this formation then you take the contemptors as the support company for the formation making it legal the idea here is you have one unit that is dedicated to its firepower with the plasma guns and the missile launchers and you have another one that's kind of more dedicated to melee it's not that much more dedicated to melee it's not great but that's kind of what it gets a bonus to sort of and that's really the limit of your expression with this. That changes immediately once you swap and get a second box from your friend because of the minimum detachment sizes on the specialist units. Let's say you wanna run four assault marines or four terminators. You need four bases. And again, in the starter kit, you only get two. You swap, you get four, and you can immediately run that. What that means is you can now have a dedicated Terminator detachment that you fill into an optional support slot that can deep strike independently. You have a dedicated Assault Marine squad that can move way faster on its own and cause way more havoc in terms of capturing objectives. You can even have more expression with those individual Tactical Marine squads and the Special Weapon squads. You can choose to have a singular unit of missile launchers, four bases, that maybe you have some play with dedicated transports or you sit in the back and garrison a building. The other option is you include them in a Tactical Legionnaire squad, but strategically separating them out from your plasma gunners who go to the other Tactical Legionnaire squad. The reason this is important is infantry can't split fire in this game. So you put the missile launchers in one, the plasma gunners in another, and you have the missile launchers be sort of your dedicated AT, while the plasma gunners, even though they're light AT, I have a shorter range and probably want to be attacking infantry more often. Then you can take the extra eight tactical legionnaires you have and max out the upgrades on these two squads and give extra wound padding to both of your weaponry platforms in the form of four extra legionnaire bases per squad, making it 12 per squad and the commander will join one of them. 
You can see how just by adding this swap in, we have way more expression in the unit types we can create, including some that I didn't list. You can do some things that are creative with the Assault Legionnaires if you want, and the Terminators, mixing them into Legionnaires as well. It is worth noting that there are essentially three bases in that scenario you don't get to use that you are getting, which are the command bases. Again, you get two with every box of infantry, but in a Legion Demi Company, you can only include one and no more than one. You can't pay points to have more bases in a command squad. It is maxed at one. So you'll probably have three to two that you don't really know what you're doing with for a while. That was okay in my case because my box was missing a base. So I don't need it because I'm not using that command squad. I don't have anything to say about the Contemptors because you can run an individual unit of Contemptors with just four, and sometimes you don't want more than that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, you can see kind of just from those examples how swapping gives you a lot more flexibility and cohesion than just buying the box. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get to the list. So the list is Alpha Legion, and we need to go ahead and take a look at two rules that are incredibly important to the formation of this list. The first rule we need to look at is Infiltrate, which is very different from 40k if you're familiar with it in that setting. In 40k, Infiltrate is part of the standard deployment where you alternate putting down units, some of them just getting to set up in no man's land, and having to be more than 9 inches away from the enemy deployment or other enemy units. In Legions Imperialis, it is not part of standard deployment. It goes after both players are finished deploying, giving you maximum intelligence on your opponent. In addition, there is no limiting factor on it proximity to the deployment zone, you just can't be in your opponent's deployment zone. The only limiting factor in terms of distance is you have to be more than four inches away from an enemy unit. This is really huge because of the next rule we're talking about. Mutable Tactics states that per formation in your army, you may gain three detachments or units the mutable tactics effect. This grants them outflank, infiltrate, or forward deployment, provided they are an infantry, vehicle, walker, or cavalry. In the event that they're not one of these four things, they get forward deploy as a standard. It's important to note that it is three detachments per formation you have. A lot of people think it's just three flat. It's not that. Every formation you have grants you another three, which is why Alpha Legion wants many small formations. In addition to that, it's worth noting that these three detachments don't have to be spread out per formation. Rules is written because it states three detachments in the army. You can have two detachments and assign all six of your mutable tactics allotment to one formation's detachments. This is a very interesting and I'm sure has plenty of use cases. It's just something worth mentioning as we're going forward. With that out of the way, let's talk about the actual units, and we're gonna start with a Legion Demi Company. We're gonna start with what I mentioned earlier, the commander and two 12-man bases dedicated to both a missile launcher squad and a plasma gunner squad. The commander is then going to attach the plasma gunner squad, making it 13 bases. The reason being is their short range is probably gonna put them more at risk, so Feel No Pain and Master Tactician are probably gonna get more use out of that squad than a missile launcher squad. Then we're going to fill the support company with that four-man unit of assault marines we now have access to, able to move 21 inches in a turn if it marches, which is very huge for the way objectives work in this game, which if you're not familiar, the minute you have an objective, the minute it's under your control, you keep it even if you're not on it until your opponent captures it. So being able to infiltrate these assault marines and then move them at light speed across the board with jump packs is going to be huge. And already right there, we have three detachments we can target with mutable tactics and all target for infiltrate. We are gonna fill out some optional detachments here in this formation though. The first one being Terminator Squad, which now goes into Deep Strike. So it also isn't on the board for deployment. The next one, however, is going to be Contemptor Dreadnoughts. And because I've already used my mutable tactics and they don't have a built-in special ability, I can't keep them off the board unless I include the next item, a Thunderhawk gunship. A Thunderhawk gunship can carry four Contemptor Dreadnoughts in it, and because it's a flyer, can start off the board. And that is all we're gonna do with this formation for the moment. That means that this entire formation isn't deploying while our opponent is doing so, which is hilarious to me. Next, we're moving on to our armor and the odd tricky spot I was mentioning I was gonna get to earlier because in order to include both of our battle tanks, we have to use an armored company or we have to have two Legion Demi companies. 
The reason being is that First Legion Demi Company only allows for one battle tank squadron. Now we could just kind of run a second Legion Demi Company, spreading out our support attachments across them and trying to use incredibly small tactical legionnaires that are just four legionnaires. That's not really what I wanna be doing. So I went ahead and got a box of Kratos heavy tanks to round out this army. And I recommend a lot of people do this. They're the only heavy tank in the Space Marine Detachment right now. And to use the Armored Company, you have to have heavy armor. I suspect that this is why there was a photo originally of them with the starter kit and they were taken out. Perhaps because they realized how pivotal these units were gonna be for making a rounded list and so they wanted to make more money off of it. But that's just speculation. With the Kratoses, we're then able to include both the Sicarians and a Predator unit into one formation using four Kratoses, six Predators, and four Sicarians. And again, for this formation, that is it. That's another formation. That's three units we can target with mutable tactics. We're gonna target each one of these and they're either gonna infiltrate or outflank. And quite frankly, the Kratoses might be a good idea for outflanking. It's a good way to keep them safe and get them in close distance when they do come on board to make the use of their cannons or their Melta cannon as well, depending on how you load them out. The Sicarians, it may also be a good idea to outflank because if you're using the weapons that are using tracking to better hit flyers, you can hold them off the board until the enemy flyers would be coming on, essentially keeping them a little bit safer before they need to do their role. So again, we are deploying nothing right now, but then we move on to the next step, which is including a single Warhound Titan at 330 points. We can't keep this one off the battlefield, unfortunately, because it is not Alpha Legion. So it will be deploying basically by itself with one exception. With the Warhound Titan, we have around 1,480 points. And it's worth noting that we don't have anything to hold our home objective from deployment because a Warhound Titan has zero tactical strength. So to round out the list, go to your local GW, get the free mini of the month for December, a singular epic rhino. Pay 10 points, 14 points, give it a multi melta and throw it into the Legion Demi Company. Then just deploy it on your home point and you have it for the rest of the game until your opponent takes it from you. And that's the list. You deploy with a Warhound Titan and a single Rhino and then you infiltrate or outflank everything else. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would think if you were playing against it, if I was your opponent and told you what was happening, how you would react. Would you be frustrated or find it to be the most hilarious thing ever? And uh, if you like this one, check out the Emperor's Children video. Again, I'll be uploading these at the same time. And let me know what you want to see next. See ya.